Welcome to our second video on lithium batteries. In our first video, we talked about lithium on sailboats, talked about some of the benefits of lithium, how they were made, and we also talked about the BMS and compared some prices of lithium batteries to lead acid batteries. So if you're totally new to lithium batteries and you want to know what they're all about, feel free to click the link above my head or in the description below. But if you're totally sold on lithium batteries and maybe you've even bought some, this video is a video for you because today we're going to take you through and show you how we install them on a sailboat. We're going to start today by talking about what you should know before you start installing lithium and then mapping out the entire system so you can see step by step what we're going to do before we do it and then at the end we're going to take you through a step-by-step -step process of how we install the batteries aboard Polar Seal. As a bonus we're also going to take you through some mistakes I made during this whole process so you can see some of the problems I had and hopefully you can learn from them. So you may be asking yourself who is this guy and why is he telling me how to install lithium in a boat and you're right I'm no electrician so so if you do have any questions at all or any doubts about putting lithium on your boat beyond this video, please reach out to a qualified electrician in your area, preferably one that works on boats, and get help and advice if you need it. With all that said, let's dive in and start installing lithium on a boat. So the first thing to do is to check your chargers. Lithium batteries have different charging profiles than lead acid batteries, so it's good to go in and look at all of your chargers to see if they're able to be changed or if they have a specific lithium charging profile. If they do, then you're all set to go. If they don't, don't worry, not all is lost. If they don't have it, what you need to make sure is that the parameters for your charger don't exceed the parameters for your battery. So for instance, we wanna take a look at our voltage and the maximum current that the battery can accept. For example, you wanna make sure that the charging voltage is below that of the maximum charging voltage of the battery. So for example, maybe the maximum charging voltage for your lithium batteries is 14.9, but your charger does 15.2. That would not be a good situation and maybe you'd want to reconsider getting a new charger. Alternatively, current could also be one. Maybe your charger can put out 100 amps but your battery can only accept 50 amps. That too would be a situation you'd want to replace that charger. So have a look at your chargers, your shore charger, and your MPPTs before you start. One of the chargers I did not talk about is the alternator. Lithium batteries have the ability to absorb so much power during the charge cycles that we could run into a situation where the alternator just keeps pumping out power and power and power because the batteries keep accepting it. And that could be a situation where we might burn out our alternator. Alternatively, we could have a situation when the batteries and the BMS inside the battery stop accepting a charge. And if that happens, we have a potential of running a big current back into the alternator. And in that situation, we may end up hurting or destroying the diodes inside, essentially making our alternator useless. Because of this, we need to have a way to protect our alternator. So in our setup, what we're going to use is a battery to battery charger. This will allow us to protect our alternator while it's charging our lithiums, but it also gives us the benefit of selecting a very specific lithium battery charging profile while charging off of the alternator. There are some smart alternator regulators out there. Balmer, for instance, makes one that is capable of understanding that lithium batteries are connected to the alternator and will charge specifically for that. However, most alternators, like the one we have on Polar Seal, which is an 80 amp Hitachi alternator, are fairly dumb and have a very hard time understanding that lithium batteries are connected versus lead acid batteries. So this is one reason we will want to protect our alternator. On most sailboats, we don't just have a house bank, we have other batteries in our system. For instance, maybe a starter battery or bow thruster batteries. That's another piece to think about before you start. On board Polar Seal, we're only addressing our house bank. There's two reasons for this. One is that we had already just replaced our bow thruster batteries and our starter batteries with lead acid. The second piece is cost. You're only using that starter battery and those th thruster batteries a very small percentage of the overall time that you're on the boat. So for us, there's not a big cost benefit for replacing the starter and bow thruster batteries with lithium. If you do decide to go that route and want everything on your boat lithium, make sure that you install a specific starter lithium battery and don't just use a house battery because the BMSs and the battery are specifically designed for starting and high amperage applications. Is that a thing? Yeah. Like lithium starter battery? Yeah. I didn't know it's that. It's the same with lead acid. I didn't know that. 
Yeah. Okay, moving on. The inverter was also another piece that we considered. On our boat currently, the inverter is also our charger, so it's a two-in-one system. Because we're adding so much more power to our boat, I took the opportunity to add a larger inverter to Polar Seal. This would give us the benefit of using these new lithium batteries on our AC applications. So for instance, us charging more computers, Sophie using a bigger hair dryer, and even an electric heater. We chose to install the new inverter charger before we did the lithium install, just so that we can keep the amount of work manageable when we actually started in charging the batteries. So we did the inverter charger a few weeks before we actually did the changeover to lithium. Another thing to think about is maybe some of the smaller details where you're installing your batteries. For example, the battery box. The batteries we're installing on Polar Seal have a much smaller footprint than the current batteries we have, but they're also taller. So because of this, I had to rethink the battery area, specifically the battery box. So this winter, I started playing around with a bit of carbon fiber and actually made my own battery box for these. Oh, it smells good in here. Yeah. But you could make a battery box of anything. The point is to just think about that a little bit before you start the project so you can plan it out ahead of time. One note of caution though, make sure when you're inspecting the battery area to inspect the entire area. I was a bit surprised when I pulled out our old battery box that the floor was not completely flat under it. In fact, there was a huge <laughs> hole uh, where the old battery box was, so I had to put a piece of wood there. So make sure you check the entire space to ensure there's no surprises once you get going. The last bit to consider before you start is time management. If you're living on your sailboat, this is especially true because maybe you need power to actually function in life. When we started this project, I started a little bit late in the day and thus I finished after night. This caused a little bit of problems uh, because Sophie and I actually ended up having to get an Airbnb for the night because the boat was a mess. We still didn't have power, thus we had no lights, nothing for cooking. We had no water. We had no water. So I really encourage you to think about the time management. Think about how much it's going to take and add 50% to it. <laughs> Your partner will thank you. Did you forget anything, Ryan? Yep, I forgot something. So when we're installing our batteries, our batteries have the BMS included. So some batteries have the BMS excluded and need to be connected externally to the batteries. That's something you should consider when planning your battery install, is if the BMS is inside or outside. In relationship to time management, I think it's really important to map out the system before you start. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so it's now time for battery art class with Ryan. This should be interesting, but we're gonna start drawing out the electrical schematic of our boat. And the first thing is the engine starter battery. And so this engine starter battery is actually just going to remain the same as it was before. It's going to be a lead acid SLA all right inside the battery. And then as with most boat setups, this battery is actually gonna be partitioned or separated from the rest of the batteries on the boat. So now I'm gonna draw in our house bank and for Polar Seal with our lithium setup, we're actually gonna have four lithium batteries. So I'll, have, I'll draw four on here, but it's representative of any boat. You could have one house battery or you could have a hundred. It doesn't matter, but for here, I'm gonna draw in the four that we will use. On board Polar Seal, we're also gonna have four MPPT. So I'm gonna show that we have a few different solar arrays that we're gonna have. We only have two on board today. Hopefully by the end of the week, we will have four. Then what we're gonna do is add in our charger. Now on Polar Seal, it's actually an inverter charger from Victron, but it could just be a charger for you, that's okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is put in a, just a block here. This is a shunt. And if you're not familiar what a shunt is, a shunt is a device that allows a battery monitor to know what the current out of the battery bank is and what the current in of the battery bank is. And then I'm just gonna include two lines here. These actually go to our main switches, but for the purpose of this here is just to show where all the wires are going. Your boat may be structured a little bit differently than ours. The purpose here is that we're gonna have currents flowing into this and then from those, they're going out into the rest of the boat to be used for various devices like Sophie's hairdryer. And then finally, we're gonna have another device here. This is gonna be our alternator. Now, as we get going, we're gonna add some positive and negatives to all this so you can see where all the wires are going. And then in the shunt, 
The shunt, the only thing that connects to the shunts, at least on our boat, is the negatives. So we just have a negative there, that's why there's only one. The first thing to do is to connect the batteries, and we're gonna connect our batteries, since they're all 12 volt, and, and our boat system is 12 volt, we're gonna connect them in parallel. I'm just gonna draw some lines here showing that. So we're connecting all the positives, and then the way our system works is we run everything down to this positive. It's actually a positive switch, but or a bus bar, and then off to the rest of the boat it goes. We'll do the same with the negatives. And then with the negative, the only difference is, is that that negative line is gonna run out, and it's gonna come down to our shunt first. Whoop! And then from the shunt up, and then over. Okay, and that then allows the shunt to know the current going out and in. So for the real observant person here, you'll notice that I have the positive line coming off one end of the battery bank and the negative line coming off the other end. Today on board Polar Seal, we have the positive and the negative coming off the same battery that goes to our distribution buses and to the rest of the boat. I've talked to a number of people on this subject and a newer suggestion and what some boat builders are even doing is they're running the negative line off one end of the battery bank and the positive line off the other end of the battery bank. And what that's supposed to do is it's supposed to reduce the load and the, um, the amount of work that the first battery is doing in the chain. So if you have four, three, four, five batteries in a parallel chain, you'll find that the first battery may be getting depleted a lot quicker than the rest of the batteries. That's because this one's got to fill up, then this one, then this one, this one, and then this one drains off first, then this one, this one, this one. So this actually helps equalize and level the load that's being placed on all the batteries. So we're gonna try that today on board Polar Seal and we're gonna see how it works. So that's how we're gonna wire them in parallel. Then we have uh, the positives coming off of our MPPTs and just for simplicity's sake, we're actually gonna run all of these down to our distribution bus, which is this, the switch. That way it flows here and then it will flow back, but it just keeps everything nice and orderly. And then the same thing here, coming off, gotta make sure we got enough room here for all the lines. Have all these come into our negative. These lines are gonna get a little mixed, but you understand that there's four lines that are coming, okay? So four of each T is coming there, and then that flows through the shunt and it will flow back from the batteries. The next thing we're gonna do is look at the inverter and charger and again the same thing we're just going to have it connected pretty much as we have it connected today so we'll have the positive coming off here and then into the positive bus and the negative will come off over this and into our negative bus okay so that allows it all to work now if you're looking at this diagram you may say I don't know, why did we just draw that out? Like, it looks the same as our setup today. The point is actually right. We don't need to change a lot in the boat. We might need to, to check the gauging of the wires and, and the terminal ends for our new batteries, but we don't need to change a lot other than the settings on board our chargers and MPPTs. Where the difference lies is in our alternator and the engine starter battery setup, okay? So we wanna protect that alternator uh, in the process. So the way that I'm gonna do it on board Polar Seal is we're gonna disconnect the alternator from the house bank, but we're still gonna leave it connected to the starter battery, the engine starter battery, as I've depicted here. And then from the starter battery, we're actually gonna uh, include a new device. This is called a battery to battery charger. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect our starter battery to that battery to battery charger and then we're gonna connect this battery battery charger to our buses in order for them to charge our lithium batteries. That's how we're gonna set this up today and that will protect our alternator. So, this is how it's gonna look. It looks a lot prettier here than it might look later. <laughs> so this is our battery box. This is where our two 140 Varta SLA batteries are sitting. You can see here it's just like cable mess. We have our two MPPTs sitting here and we actually have this cool thing. It's a Victron Venus. It connects all of our electrical systems together so I can see it all on a pad. This is the shunt I was talking about. Uh, this is an old battery charger. We're actually going to remove that today also. 
And then the rest is just wire chaos crazy. It looks a lot worse than it is because most of these wires are up here. So the first step that we need to do is we need to remove these batteries and we actually need to remove this battery box and it's just gonna be an empty box at first. Okay, so now it's time. Shut down the power to your boat. My suggestion is to shut down everything. Disconnect your shore power, shut all the switches off on the boat and make sure nothing is trying to draw a load. After you prepare your box, it's now time to get all of your new wires prepared. So for Polar Steel, we need to make all new cables that connect our four lithium batteries, which will be wired in parallel. So this required us to cut the 70 millimeter squared wire, put new terminal ends on, crimp those, put heat shrink on, and I think we had between eight and 10 of those to do. So right now I got a really tedious task going on. I gotta make about six of these things and then put some heat shrink on them, but I don't have any power on the boat, so I can't turn on the heat gun. Uh, but we're going to be making these to put on the different terminals as we line up the batteries. So what I've got here is a gigantic cutter. I've got the cable that I just cut and some terminal ends. What I do is just kind of approximate how far that will go on and just take a knife here, cut around this. So we need to crimp these and this is 70 millimeter square wire. We're gonna use a hydraulic crimper. Plunk it in there and without a lot of help on the boat today. Very awesome sound, as you can hear. And then it will pop, so then you just release it. And then we got a crimp. Maybe you purchase a battery that you can just use your old cables for. Our batteries had 12 millimeter terminals, ends on it, and the old batteries had 10 millimeters, so I had to put new ends on all of our wires, and that's the reason I did it. And I think for me to do eight of those took around two hours. That took a lot longer than I was anticipating, so keep that in mind while doing this. The next bit is to change all of the settings for your charger and your MPPTs. For Victron, which is what we have on this boat, there's an application you can plug in your MPPTs into the computer. You just go in, it's super simple, and click type of battery and select lithium. So we are going to do just a few setting changes to kind of the more important things, the bigger one being the charger inverter because we use that right away. We have a Victron MultiPlus, so we're gonna use this thing called an MK3 to USB. It's a little dongle. We attach that up here to the USB that we have to our control panel. And then they have a cool app. It's called Victron Configure, Victron Config. So we're gonna open that up. So I would do go to lithium battery type, lithium iron phosphate, okay. And just click send settings and then that will pop up with it, must be restarted, click okay and off you go. The last thing we just need to change is the solar controllers or the MPPTs that we have. To do that, we're just going to use the same method we used last night by connecting our Victron cables here to our computer. All we do is we take this uh, USB to the Victron Direct. We're gonna plug it in the computer here. There we go, our blue solar charger. Click on that. So we go up top here, settings. Then we can just select battery, the voltage, current, whatever. Uh, but then we can also get the battery preset. And we can either define those or select a preset. And then in here, there is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Just click OK. We can just check the different settings here. So these are the same settings that were used on the inverter charger yesterday. The absorption of 4.2 and float of 13.5. Yeah, everything else looks good. So we'll just go ahead and exit out of that. The nice thing with the Victron app is it will give us recommended profile settings but we also have the ability to adjust so slightly per our, our own desires or our own battery recommendations. So the next bit is the fun bit. This is when we get to wire up our setup according to our drawings. 
So we're gonna to wanna to put our battery box in place and make sure that's secure. Place the lithium batteries in their new homes and then start wiring the batteries in place. The last bit is to test our lithium batteries, but before we do that, a lot of lithium battery manufacturers recommend, if you're wiring in parallel, to wire those batteries in parallel and let them sit before you put a load on them. This is to allow the batteries to kind of adjust and settle in their new family together. We then connected the system and then started testing by putting load. Okay, big moment. We're turning on the power. Uh, let's see how she goes. The one thing that we did that you shouldn't do was we got a bit excited and wanted to see how far we could push our new inverter. So we turned on the inverter, turned on our hot water heater. I think we were running 124 amps, which is a lot through the system, but it, our water heater worked. We weren't getting any warnings. Things seemed to be pretty stable. Just take your time, build up step by step to make sure your system's working well. It's such a good feeling when you do a big project and it finishes. Yes. So that's it guys. That's how we installed lithium batteries on our boat. Through the whole process, I made two mistakes. The first one was we started a little too late on the first day with the install. I think I started around 11 and we lost light inside the battery room at about five. Looking back on that, I probably could have wired my old batteries up just to survive the night, but that wasn't something I had thought about until I was falling asleep at the Airbnb. The second thing that I did was I drilled through my inverter cable. That was an accident, something I did right at the end of the day. I thought I had the cable pulled back far enough from where I was drilling and it went right through. Luckily, I had an electrician on board who was working on a different project. We discussed it and found a way to get the wires back together in a safe fashion. If you're still interested in Dakota lithium batteries, the ones that we used in this video, you can go online and use promo code Ryan and Sophie to get a 10% discount at dakotalithium.com. We don't get any kickbacks from the sales of these batteries, but Dakota Lithium is a company I helped found and is a company I still help run today. And that's one reason we're able to offer this 10% discount. discount. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like this series, consider subscribing. And again, thanks for watching. I hope you got something valuable out of this video. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.